Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, so I thought I'd come back on. I was going to do a, an, uh, a video actually for you guys today. It had been a while, but I woke up um, with a sty <laughs> in my eye. I've only had one before, and so I'm. It's uncomfortable as hell um, if you've ever had one. Um, but suffice to say, I look like I have a little bit of like not pink eye, but my yeah, my eye is swollen. So I'm not going to subject you guys to that nonsense and put it on a video. But I wanted to come on because I've had a lot of people reach out and say, you know, you talk a lot about the mental symptoms of, of bind and benzo withdrawal, but not as much about the physical symptoms. I do talk a little bit about skin burning. I did one of those. And I do, I focus on the mental because that is probably the, it's, it's definitely the, the, the emotional and mental have been the ones that have taken me under. So they've probably been, um, you know, more of a focus for me just as I've been trying to figure this out for myself and sharing that with you guys. But that said, I want to come back to something um, that I think is really critical because it answers to me, again, not being a an MD, not being a neurochemist or a neurobiologist, um, I it answers kind of all of our questions. So when I hear from people that say, you know, I'm dizzy all the time, or I've, you know, I have vertigo, or, you know, I can't handle, um, I have multiple chemical sensitivities, I can't eat much, I can't move, I feel like gravity has taken hold and pulls me down when I try to stand up. Um, I have to crawl to the bathroom, I have pots, um, uh, you know, whatever, uh, the, the uh, you know, burning brain, the, the band around the head, um, you know, uh, the list goes on, right? Um, of these intense physical symptoms. And in some ways, what I find are the people that have the physical symptoms say, well, the mental symptoms make sense to me. That would make sense why I would have those, but it doesn't make sense why I just have all these physical symptoms. And, you know, the, the people that have the mental symptoms are like, gosh, this is hell. I could probably tolerate it better if I just had physical symptoms. And I think, again, the worst kind of pain is your own, right? And so whether you're dealing with mental or physical or you know, both, cognitive, all of it. Um, but to me, there is kind of a central answer. And I keep talking about this, but I'm going to go over it again for those of us that are kind of now thinking about physical symptoms or a mix of physical, mental, and cognitive. And I talk about this as a, a central nervous system injury, central nervous system sensitization. That is what's going on. And I'm going to bring us back to the limbic system. Um, I talk a lot about this limbic system, again, as it relates to fear and why we would be experiencing so much um, irrational fear or OCD kind of stuff, that type of thing. But this limbic system goes much deeper than that. So let me just go a little deeper in explaining this. If you're listening and and wanting to better understand, well, how is this relating to my physical uh, you know, d dysfunction in this. So again, remember that limbic system is that deep kind of set of structures in our brain. It's responsible for everything from memory to learning to our behavior, motivation, our emotional coding of things. And it's certainly the seat of our sense of safety. It, it sparks that fight, flight, or freeze response, right? But we can't forget that the limbic system is also the control center for the entire body. And I talked about this in one of my last videos, that hypothalamus and that limbic system, it, it, it controls everything. Um, and so we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more. But the limbic system, like I've said, it monitors our external environment, what's going on outside of us and our internal environment. It takes in all of our sensory input from what we see, hear, feel, taste, touch, smell, and then it assigns emotional significance to these things. And and, and it's so again, it has a lot of responsibilities. It's responsible um, for regulating hormones in our endocrine system and our immune functions. Um, it regulates our autonomic nervous system, which is our parasympathetic and our sympathetic nervous system. This includes our breathing, our heart rate, our pulse, our blood pressure, as well as our emotional responses. So let me repeat that. Think about what I just said. It reg our limbic system that is injured. Why is it injured? Go back to my videos and listen or audios and listen because it, the limbic system has the most dense population of the GABA receptors that have been ad affected negatively by the benzodiazepine and the removal of the benzodiazepine. 
Okay, so in this limbic system, it regulates the functioning of our autonomic nervous system. That's made up of two parts, which is our parasympathetic and our sympathetic nervous system. And these include things like breathing, heart rate, pulse, our emotional responses, as well as things like blood pressure. Um, and, and the parasympathetic is kind of the rest and digest. It's how we calm down. And the sympathetic um, kind of goes along with our state. So it increases the blood, you know, the inc- increases blood, fr- blood flow. It increases our heart rate. It, it, it ties into the state that we're in, okay? Um, and when it's working properly, um, it, it, it handles all of these things well. It reads danger signals relatively well. It navigates things. And because it's that control center for the body, as it reads danger or distress properly, it runs our body properly. But when it's injured, which it is in us, or impaired, however you want to think about it, it's completely overreacting to, to all kinds of stimuli. And we get into this very long-term, chronic, overactive stress response, okay? And again, I use that idea of, remember the old-timey operators where you've got, you know, the, the calls are coming in on the switchboard and they've got to like, you know, plug in, uh, take the plug and put it into one hole to connect a call and then take the, you know, the other cord and plug it into another hole to collect. And if you've ever seen these on, if not, Google, you know, go on YouTube or Google it if, you, if you're too young to remember, or too young to remember seeing a show where they did this. And that's how I think about our limbic system is that operator that's there trying to, to plug the calls into the right slot so that people can communicate so that our, our nerves can communicate to each other, our systems can communicate. I'm in danger, therefore, let's send adrenaline and cortisol. Let's dilate the pupils. Let's increase um, heart rate. Let's do all these things to get people moving, right? But when there's this cross-wiring and misfiring that's happening, that normal circuitry, that normal neurocircuitry that we need gets distorted, it, 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 it gets confused, you're getting plugged into the wrong holes. And as a result of that, you're having all kinds of um, unconscious and conscious reactions. Your sensory perceptions are off and your protective responses are off. You're now hypersensitive, you're hyper aware, you're overactive, you're overfiring, and you're overreacting. Now, how does this begin to affect us on a physical level. Remember this, all of our systems are tied in tightly together. Our immune system is highly influenced by our central nervous system and our uh, this limbic system that, that's so densely populated and injured, right? And so since our immune system can be affected, this can create a whole host of symptoms from anything from digestion to hormone balance, to obviously to our mood, to being able to detoxify ourselves to get rid of toxins, our cognitive function. And then because our body is never able to slow down and rest and repair like a, like a healthy body can, and it's co- so, so constantly overreacting, we are stuck in that on position. And because we're in that on position, um, our body never gets to repair. Our body never, and it gets stuck in these what we call kind of limbic trauma loops, right? It's just that repeated overfiring. Um, of the fight or flight. It's not responding to our internal or external world properly. And it's creating these, this loop and it gets stuck in this basically survival mode. Okay. And again, with that, as it stays in survival mode, the release of our stress hormones that's supposed to kind of come in to help us and then come, you know, go back to homeostasis, it doesn't. So the adrenaline and cortisol are kind of spiraling out of control. And this can create a complete cascade of mysterious symptoms that affect all parts of our body. Okay, so let's talk about the parts of the body and the things that can come up with a an inflamed um, and angry limbic system. Okay. Um, and, and remember, let me go back before we go into the, the symptoms themselves or, or the manifestations. So what we're talking about is we're not talking about a psychological illness. We're not talking about um, problems with our thoughts and our feelings. We have problems with our thoughts and our feelings because we have a thinking and feeling problem, not a thought and a feeling problem, if that makes sense. It's not our thoughts or our feelings that are causing this. It's our state that's causing problematic thoughts and feelings, okay? It's a real brain injury. It's a real central nervous system injury, okay? 
Um, and so the limbic system has gone haywire. It's gone rogue. And because it's the control center of our entire body, it just sends, just to think about it, like, it, you know, it, it's like, you know, it's like throwing something in and, and it, just do, it just goes downstream throughout our body. And it's sending the wrong messages to all parts of our body, all the systems in our body. Okay. And so it's impacting everything. So let's talk a little bit about what it's impacting and what people can experience. And this is just a few things, but people can experience OCD like behavior. They can experience um, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, food sensitivities, POTS, skin conditions, mast cell activation, chronic pain conditions, dysautonomia. If you don't know what that word is, please look it up because it may describe a lot of what you're descri- if you're, what you're going through as you're dealing with um, all sorts of kind of neurological struggles. It can cause allergies, sensory issues, depression, anxiety, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, fibromyalgia-like issues, multiple chem- chemical sensitivities, uh, Lyme disease kind of, mi- kind of mimics Lyme disease, Epstein-Barr virus kind of mimics that brain fog. It can create these these chronic inflammatory responses in our bodies that, you know, we know for sure, one thing we know for sure is that when we're inflamed, when we're having an inflammatory response, we can have all kinds of, you know, system issues from our skin to our digestive tract, to our respiratory tract, to our vestibular system, to our ocular system, to um, obviously the way we process emotions and memories and coding of behavior. I mean, everything gets affected is my point. So when people say to me, but you're not talking a lot about the physical, I understand that. And I'm going to try to do more of that. But what you have to understand is that when you have a limbic system injury, when you have the command center of the body that is now sending the wrong, distorted, confusing signals out, there isn't in my opinion, a system in the body um, that is not affected. Our neurotransmitters are affected. They run the show. Our hormones are affected. They run the show. The, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, like I was talking about, you know, when those get out of whack and you're stuck in this unconscious fight or flight, and the reason I say unconscious is because you're not thinking, I feel afraid, right? You're not looking at a dog coming at you and thinking, I feel afraid. You're waking up and staring at your wall and feeling like you're in danger. You know, like as if there's just, there's a, like, there's somebody behind you. You know, I used to just, I describe it as like somebody behind me with a gun to my back that nobody else can see but me. So I'm not consciously conjuring these things up. These are unconsciously driven patterns that are literally changing the chemicals and the hormones and the neurotransmitters in my body that are keeping the rest of my body from getting the right commands and the right instructions to do the right thing. Now, I say all this not to scare you, but I say all this to say that if we really, if I'm right about this or if if we're right about this, I'm not the only one that thinks this by any means. This is stuff I've come up with by researching what other people are talking about. But the more I've learned about the limbic system and how it basically runs the show, okay? It it runs our show from scalp to toe, internally and externally in terms of how we respond to our environments and stimuli. Then it would make sense that if you can't stand up, that makes sense in terms of maybe POTS or that feeling of like gravity pulling you down, right? Like we're we're relying on our neural, neural circuitry to work and to be sending all, and to, you know, that operator to be sitting there and plugging, you know, I'm calling grandma and all of a sudden I'm getting plugged into somebody in, you know, in, in, in Poland, or I'm trying to call my, my mom in Pennsylvania and I'm getting plugged into some stranger in, you know, Missouri. That's what's happening at the switchboard of our bodies and our minds. And we can't then expect our bodies to know what to do and it's not their fault. Um, and when that limbic system that inferno <laughs> begins to quell. The systems begin to quell. And you hear this from the people that have come before us. Um, you know, we talk a lot about, are we going to get stuck with PTSD? A lot of people are telling us, no, we're not, for many of us. That a lot of these terrible feelings, thoughts, sensations, physical and emotional, they just go away. 
And, you know, I don't know if you've ever had a, like, I'll give an example for myself. Yesterday morning, I was in that state of, oh, my God, this is never going to get better. How is this ever going to get better? How will I ever how will I ever live normally again after going through something that has been so life-changing and and is consistently so awful? And then last night, I had about two hours where even if I tried to conjure up the thought, it didn't evoke the fire alarm. And it's in those glimpses. And Claire Weeks, I always go back to her, but she always talked about those glimpses. If you get a glimpse every couple months or every couple weeks or maybe an hour a day or whatever glimpse. And I know I know many of you are listening and you're like, Jennifer, I haven't had a glimpse in a year. Okay, I get it. And I'm so sorry for that. But I also know that we heal. I really do believe that. And I don't care what you're dealing with. The more I'm understanding about the command center of our body being so impacted by this medication injury, um, it would make sense that, again, whatever you're feeling from head to toe, internally, externally, physically, mentally, cognitively, um, emotionally, it all makes sense. And we now have to wait for that kind of that, that inferno to go out, right? And it, it's not helping by sending in the troops. If sending in the troops helped, we would be out of this hell immediately, right? Because we've become pros unconsciously at sending all kinds of adrenaline and cortisol rushing to the scene to put out the fire. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. We can try to do things to not make it worse, right? We, we're learning that our diet helps and some movement helps. Um, as much Some social connection helps in terms of knowing you know, some twinship in this and you know, having some people that understand you and believe you. Time is critical in this. Attitude, I always talk about that as best we can, even though I know that it's always not always easy to do. Um, so there's things we can do to kind of help ourselves uh, not make it worse. Not necessarily make it better, but not make it worse. So I hope this was helpful, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep coming back to this limbic system because quite honestly, like I said, in my mind, what this is, is this is central nervous system sensitization. And the reality is I'm watching other groups of people look like us. I'm watching people uh, coming off other meds like antidepressants or gabapentin or antipsychotics or antibiotics um, have, have you know either adverse reactions or in the discontinuation have problems. I'm getting story, stories from people that have had similar reactions to us uh, after after taking a steroid. Um, people again long haul COVID. I'm hearing things. Uh, Lyme disease can look very similar to this. Um, and and so and also people that just have uh, extreme overload of stress that has become anxiety. You know that something in their life has tipped the scales. The waters come over the side. It has scared the hell out of them, and they've gotten caught in this limbic trauma loop of fight or flight freeze. Right. So my point in saying that is that. Um, this limbic system injury that we have, there are other groups of people that have this for different reasons and they look similar to us. Now, I don't know what their recovery time is. It could be longer, could be shorter. We don't even know what our recovery time is, right? Like if I lined up a hundred of us with benzo withdrawal and you know we'd all taken the same amount of med for the same amount of time and we tapered the same amount of time, we would probably still have a hundred different stories. It's also part of the frustrating piece of this that I talk about all the time. So anyway, guys, I wanted to come on for those of you that are kind of reaching out that have more of the multiple chemical sensitivities, the fibromyalgia, the pain syndromes, the chronic fatigue, the POTS, uh, the migraines, um, the the, the different inflammatory responses, the IBS, um, mass cell activation, you know, those dysautonomia, those types of things. It all makes sense if we're thinking about our limbic system is on fire. Thanks, guys.